Honda Civic and their Type R release reminds me a little bit of your first day in a difficult class of pretty much any kind, okay? The teacher walks in and you look at them. You just want to see exactly what they're about. I taught school for 20 years in the inner city, so don't even think about messing with me. Like, is the shirt tucked in? Because if, he, if it is, it's probably like a formal guy, okay? He's probably gonna tell us that there's no extra credit and that any late assignment is an immediate failure, okay? He's got trendy shoes on. Oh, probably is a hidden TikTok somewhere. Comes with a bow tie, probably likes to party. But with 2023 Civic Type R is like the teacher that you had with the bow tie and trousers for your first year and then comes wearing a full suit the second year, which is a little bit odd. So should we be scared that it lost its spice or is it a must needed change for the platform? Now that's a really good question. Me, I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores and today we're gonna be diving into the raw dog talk about the new 2023 Honda Civic Type R. And if you haven't yet, you can pick up not one of these tees, but one of those tees is over on my website over at alexmartini.net. There's not a lot of them left, but if you are interested in supporting, it would mean a lot. If not, just at least drop a comment. Let me know what your favorite thoughts are on the Type R, your raw dog, your real take, your, I'm not going there because there's kids around. I mean, it would be cool. I like to hear what you think about it. Plus I'm responding to every comment. So that's kind of what this whole thing is about is just what happened with the new Type R. And it's still kind of marinating for me. It's still a little bit different and I'm still not really sure how I personally feel about it. But when you look at the FKA Type R it was by all intentions a hot boy racer. It had non-functional vents. It had a massively lifted rear ass and more triangles and harsh shapes that could have given the RX-8 a run for its money if the RX-8 was actually a car that didn't self-detonate. It was obnoxious. The Type R, the old one, it was obnoxious, okay? And it was aggressive. It was the car that we'd probably draw if we were 12 years old in middle school waiting for social studies to end. I don't know what to tell you besides that. And even though it wasn't meant for a 45 year old taking their kids to church, it was a needed design and attention aggressive loving car. It was 300 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque. It was absolutely, had terrible infotainment systems and the worst audio that I probably ever heard in a new car in my life outside of a Kia, okay? And it made most people happy, but there was still something missing in the FK8, that generation type R. Like it was almost too much of a boy racer car and a lot of enthusiasts called that out when the car was released. Sure, it had a bunch of little red interior pieces, but it would have been nice if it also featured a system that was easy to use and didn't lag as bad as RuneScape did on your 16 year old desktop. Look how laggy it is! The hit didn't even spawn! You kinda know what I'm saying? Like, like it was really good at one thing looking like a high schooler. And so, as the money was absolutely dumped into the market over the past few years, Honda saw it as an opportunity to introduce a second ever US version Type R for 2023, which you now can see like here. You saw people like Donut Media talking about it and other exclusive content creators that have millions of subscribers. They got to walk around and talk about their experience on this dialed back yet more powerful than ever Type R. And you know, I'm gonna be honest, you know, it hurt before, like when we wouldn't get invited to things, but now it super duper hurts because you know what? My tiny channel from the Midwest could offer some much needed feedback to these Honda engineers. There are enthusiasts up in these states, okay? We're not just part of Canada. Nobody reviewed the bumper clearance for snow when they released the Honda. Nobody talked about how good the windshield wipers were for foggy mornings. I could have helped with that. Nobody talked about how much spot of cow you could fit in the trunk. All right, so when I first saw the Type R and all the videos that started to release, I could see that the car had lost all of its Axe body spray and it felt a little odd to me because I kind of enjoyed that about the car. Now sure, the K20C1 engine is touted to be more powerful than the previous generation and sure, the fake venting went kaput, which was happy for a lot of people, but I wasn't like, you know, yeah, no more fake vents. I kind of liked them. They just needed to be functional, you know? like. That's all I needed. That's all I need from vents. So to get the obvious out of the way, the new Type R is a good thing in general. Okay, it's finally a release that sets the foundation for future high trim Japanese tuner cars in a different configuration. And that configuration is the front wheel drive, manual only option. And that's a great way to also test bed the Acura Integra Type R, which I'm sure we'll see coming soon if the Type R USDM variant actually does well. It will also give the Volkswagen some competition that I really think is needed in this space, specifically when you look at the price point that it's trying to come out at. You also get an offering, an alternative to the Subaru, okay? Something that has real widened fenders versus whatever that plastic 
is I'm not convinced is actually worth anything yet, okay? But, and it just, it gives some much needed diversity to the new entry level sports car market that I'm sure is probably gonna die. Now, I don't need to see another Toyota Supra. I don't need to see another Mark V. I know they're good, okay? So should we like the new Type R and do I like it? Well, the most controversial items seem to be so far, quite simply, that the design of the exterior is just very different, okay? And there's another thing and it has to do with just kind of the back seats. The exterior is more refined, it's more, Adult. It's less Hot Topic and more H&M, and I actually don't mind it too much. The greatest thing about what they did here was the use of functional widened fenders on this car that are exclusive to the Type R. And they didn't just slap some cheap variant over fenders that really don't do anything. These are noticeably wider when you take the right pictures and when you're looking at it in comparison to the non-Type R versions of this chassis. And it's like the chef's kiss on these fenders. Now also, Honda finally addresses the overheating issues that the previous Type R had, which is nice because, you know, for one of the reasons I would probably argue that a 2020 or 2018 sports car probably shouldn't overheat with the amount of vents the car actually had except they were fake okay shame the preceding generation with the fact that it had so many fake vents like hashtag death the fake vents i don't care how you do it okay the wing on this generation is now more receded versus it being its own picnic table the headlights look sharp ish and the design elements like the crease panels give it a little bit more of that sports car look and then they're in the right spots Ish. The roof line makes it easy to slap a helmet on and step in there and go into Road America. And with the introduction of five different colors like Championship White, Crystal Black Pearl, Boost Blue, Sonic Gray, and Rally Red, it gives people like you and people like me some more vibrant colors to mess up the car with our modifications that are 100% not gonna align because nobody likes to actually color match things. They just like to throw a bunch of mods on it. So really, what is there to dislike? on the exterior, because I didn't really even say anything. Honda has done typically a great job with their designs and their platforms, pretty much since the dawn of time. Seeing that they're the uncle you could pretty much always call on a Friday night without actually telling your parents, Honda's never really messed anything up. And they've never led us astray from designs like the Honda S2000, the NSX, the Integra Type R, and with a little bit of makeup, I'd even say the Honda Fit is kind of sick. But what makes Honda always so timeless was their generally unique styling. And that is key, unique styling. And with the new Type R, there are some things creeping in there that some people, they just don't like because it doesn't have that pizzazz. The things like the rear LED taillight that's more reminiscent of old Lincolns until the KDM market stole it for the Stinger is now on the back of our beloved front wheel drive coupe from Honda, which maybe isn't a big deal, but it is a little bit of a bigger deal to me because I wouldn't have expected that. The softened body panel now allow the car to blend in more with the hybrid SUV sedan things. You can't really tell what they even are on the road these days. It just blends in well, maybe a little bit too much. And the rear slope reminds me of the Audi Sportback design. And even though there's so many ways you can only design, you know, two doors being next to each other on a four door sedan, there's missed opportunities to carry the widened fender crease lines to the upper side of the doors. Something the FK8 did with its double bump design that had the crease flow to the door handles and another one that lifted up the rear wheels. You may not notice these things when you first look at a car, but that's really what gives it a lot of its aggression is how they carry that from the front to the back. Now, the community wanted a toned back Civic Type R, and that's essentially what they got, but it was an extreme ditch to the other side of the road, it feels like, when you just look at the car itself. Once you go inside, you can see that things would make me ecstatic to actually buy one, and at the same time, maybe a little bit horrified because they the back seats we just gotta talk about, okay? There's a plus win for the sound. Bose is in that car and I hope. I pray that it sounds better than the previous car generations because that stuff was incredibly weak and the infotainment system on it really didn't help. You could tell that that was really where they went a little bit soft on the money. But one thing that I love to look at and never own, kinda like a dog, is this all red carpet that's gonna be in this car. And it's so sick and it's gonna look sickly the moment people own that car for more than 5,000 miles. It's wild that the entirety of the actual carpet is red and like, man, I'm just not even sure how long it's actually gonna last. Now that's like the smallest thing. I know you're like, okay, Alex, the only thing you're gonna complain about is the carpet, that's all you have. Okay, no, 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 no. First off, that's a big deal, okay? I only have one other thing to mention, okay? And that is called air conditioning, okay? The rear of the Type R, AKA the back seats, have always been kind of, how do the kids say it? Mid, but the back seats have no vents, okay? There's nothing back there, nothing, all right? But man, 
Give the kids some air conditioning in the back, okay? The seats in the back are black, regardless of the front red ones, which is interesting and understandable. Again, probably a cost-cutting thing there, which is important for the Type R to stay competitive. But there's no seat storage for a 2003 edition of maps. And like, what else do you want to put back there? If your dad gave you that, you can't just throw it away. And even though Honda themselves are seeing this car more as an innovation of what was already introduced to the US market, sometimes I do wish there was a little bit more innovation into the platform from a creature comfort perspective. It's one of those things that you're starting to see companies like Kia and Hyundai do a really good job of. They may suffer in a little bit in that reliability, but you get a ton of that. If there's only one thing I had to applaud Honda for on the interior that they 130% did right, it is that integrated climate control system in the dials. Those are so ergonomic and work incredibly well once you're actually used to them. In fact, a lot of Audis have had those for a few years and people love them. The car has so far been received very, very well and people are excited to get into it to see how it actually performs versus what it looks like. And at the end of the day, that's what really matters for this platform and the FK8 equivalent and those Type R's that came before this one were a blast. I love driving them. They're absolutely incredible. And while we don't know just how much more the Type R is going to be putting out with a turbo two liter four cylinder, we do know that the track numbers it'll push out will be substantially better, both from the pros and the amateurs because of Honda's decision to go down in wheel size and their decision to switch from Continentals to Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss. Now I love Contis a lot, but if the Type R is trying to make some noise and numbers on the track, it is 100% gonna need a Michelin. For that, I definitely respect. The Downsizing wheels is good for us as consumers because that also means cheaper replacements for tires if you aren't gonna switch out the wheels. So what does this mean for the Type R? My personal take on it is that it's, it'll be the foundation of what gives Honda the answer to whether the Integra Type R and its similar platform sports cars and the enthusiast market as a whole one last opportunity to really prove or support an idea that a front wheel drive, high horsepower tuner car, even though the money is literally everywhere else in the market right now, is still worth building. And I'm not quite sure if this car is gonna win, and I really hope it does, but the market's kind of in a weird place right now. I'm not quite sold on the rear end of the car, and even though the FK8 was the hot boy racer edition of the Type R with enough imperfections that it needed enough makeup to really make it what we thought we saw actually what it was, but I can't say that I'm super stoked that some of my favorite things like the arch headlights, the rake to design, and the more angular car was genuinely removed. But what do you think? Let me know below, and of course, thanks for watching. I'm over at Alex, alex.martini with two underscores at the end. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on Thursday. Peace. Hey!